rhythm and blues. I'll never forget, I, I accidentally walked into a meeting with Tony Gray and he had just finished listening to Public Enemy Fight the Power. And he said, I will never play that ghetto trash on my station. Wow, wow. Get, wow. 1989, the number, another summer, sound of the funky drummer, music hitting your heart because I know you got soul, brothers and sisters. Where is there ghetto trash anywhere in that record? Anyway, but that was the inflection, that was the way people perceived us, that was the way we were seen. And if you weren't Houdini and singing, friends, how many of us have, and you didn't have shiny suits, then you were ghetto trash. Yeah, let me oh, ask you something, sir. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know you personally. And one of the things that I respect wholeheartedly about you is you are who you are. You Clearly, you are part of hip hop. Hip hop is part, is, is all of you. Um, but you're Jewish and you're proud. Make no mistakes about it. You and I can speak offline and I'm going to hear about Hashem. I'm going to hear about the Most High. You, you, you're very proud of your heritage, um, but you have thrived in Black culture. Have you always been in your heart uh, part of the Black culture, even before you came into hip hop? Have you always been attracted to the culture itself? And I'm not speaking. No, no, no. So I'm, yo, no, it's, it's a great question because I don't think I've ever talked about this in public. Uh, maybe I have once or twice. I've never been with a white woman. Wow. I've never dated a white woman. I never, I never kissed. The only white girl that ever kissed my lips was my mother and my sister. And that was it. In third grade, I had a crush on this girl, Vanessa. Dark skin sat next to me. I used to try to fill up her leg under the fucking desk. Like, I have, I've been, but also, and in all fairness, my mother and father, may they rest in peace, were very, very involved in all things culture and all things politics and all things that were positive. So my mother worked with um, Martin Luther King in 63, uh, bringing buses from the North to Selma. I remember Richie Havens playing guitar in my house. I remember Carlos Santana and, you know, Phil Oaks and, you know, having jam sessions in my house while they were talking about politics for New York. Bella Abzug, who's a well-known Queensboro president and, and politically involved. There were always black people, Puerto Rican people, white people, Jewish people, Catholic people, Muslim people. My house was the United Nations because my mother taught us to see good, to see always try to find good. That worked for me for a period of time until I got into the streets and then there was no good. I mean, it just, it is what it is. Because then I saw the other side. I saw the way the police treated my friends. I saw the way there was brutality. Yusef Hawkins happened. Um, So it wasn't that, and the, Jew, the Jewish part of me was always about philosophy. It wasn't about religion as much as it was philosophy. And the philosophy is, if we're the chosen people, then you have to choose right. And you have to choose to allow people to be on your level. There is no, we're the chosen people, so we're greater than, no. Being chosen means to teach and to educate and to listen and to be a part of a, a greater, one thing you learn in Judaism is that the more you learn about the Torah and the more you learn about Judaism, the smaller you become, you become a grain of sand. Um, so for me, it was always about understanding, loving and loving all people, but it got to a point where I wasn't even a practicing Jew for it for a long time because my rabbi said something so racist to me that I was going to knock him out. So I not only abandoned Judaism, but I accepted Islam. I ex accepted the 5% nation of Islam. 
I accepted any other religion other than Judaism because I saw that this was the only country in the world where Jews felt comfortable hiding behind their whiteness. And that, that just, I didn't sit well with me. When Mordechai Levy tried to kill Chuck D in 1989 with a sniper rifle, I was standing in front of 298 Elizabeth Street, like blocking the entrance. Like let the wow. bullet come through me. You know what I mean? Like, fuck you. Like he can't, he rolled up on me called me a wicked Jew because I believed in, it's so funny, the two people that Ooh, Mordecai? Me a wicked Jew, Mordechai Levy, yeah, he was the, so the Mordechai Levy, I, I'll try to explain this, it, and it's not accurate, so I hope people understand this, but the JDL, the Jewish Defense League at the time, they are to Judaism what the KKK is to Christianity, you know what I'm saying, okay. like, they're what jihad is to Islam, you know what I mean, like, it's a very fundamental part of this section of people that believe that they have to protect Jewish lives at all costs. Very similar to what the KKK believes. Very, you know, any right-wing organization. And he rolled up on me with three people and called me a wicked Jew because I supported Chuck D. I was like, yo, let me tell y'all something. Chuck D never called me a wigger. Chuck D never called me a kike. Chuck D never called me a schwatza. You did. My own people called me that. So fuck you. And if you're going to try to take him out, you might as well try to take me out. And that's why on Gas Face, a record you like but don't know any of the lyrics to, Black Hat is Bad Luck, Bad Guys Wear Black, must have been a white been guy. Must have been a white guy that started You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, and I know you know the lyrics. I'm only messing with you because I love you. But th that was why I said what I said. That, that, based because, on that incident? Based on that incident? No, just based on what I experienced from 14 to 21. Based on what I experienced. Get the gas face for those little white lies. My expression to the mountainous blue eyes. And I'm mountainous blue eyes. To form my face and shake my skull cap. Dismiss the myth that evil is not black. Opposite spectrum. So, I, you know, I felt like if I'm going to have this platform, then I better use it the right way. It, it's not just about the fame, the accolades, the touring. The, use it as a, as a platform to say, hey, this is what the culture is. This is what it's about. You know, you fast forward and you go to Pop Goes the Weasel. Most people don't realize like Pop Goes the Weasel was our ability to go to pop radio and say, hey, why aren't you playing De La? Why aren't you playing Queen Latifah? Why aren't you playing a Tribe Called Quest? Why are you playing Public Enemy? Why aren't you playing MC8? Why aren't you playing MC Breed? There's crazy good records. You don't got to play Hammond Vanilla Ice 100 times a, a day. There's a thousand good records that y'all are missing because the artists are Black and they come from independent record labels. Like, what are y'all doing? So that was really for me, not just about being Jewish, about being human, you know? And, and that was more important to me than anything else. This culture gave me the ability to be a human being. That's to dope. live in a space uh, that's human race. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move, and I'll catch you all on the next video.